but that's low stage experience. Not in Che's case, of course. He's a normal starter for Gen Air, but sometimes that's what happens. Yeah. Another blue side L Lulu ban, too. I'm really surprised to see that. Yeah, we saw the Lulu ban earlier, but now that they're still banning on, on the blue side. The Lissandra being taken out, they didn't like how much they had to deal with that in a negative way, of course, on CLG's end. Do you think this is going to be a Gragas third ban, or are they going to go for the Kindred? I honestly would have banned Gragas. Like, I don't Alongside think... the Elise, or you mean instead well, of Well, I think banning the Elise is fine. Banning the okay. Tom Kench is good. But I think third ban, I would still rather ban Gragas. I don't think Smithy plays the other champions as well. And right. he didn't really do much in the early game with Lee Sin, and he couldn't get Zion snowballing as hard as he, he did in like the, the previous set. I think it's fair. The big ban that I'm seeing is the Lissandra, and there's really no one who engages quite like Lissandra does in the current patch. You're much more reliant on a TP flank with other forms of hard engage. Lissandra, of course, has the freedom to do so with that glacial path pretty much from any position. And by taking Lissandra out of the equation, by taking Riven out of the equation, you're forcing Genera to play something completely different. So we're going to have to look for something with more late game scaling, a team comp that's going to function differently because CLG should be scared of that last composition because yeah. as Saint said, it's one or two mistakes that really let CLG win the game. And obviously CLG played amazingly, Darshan especially, but if they get behind again in the mid game, you know for sure Gen Air aren't going to give them an opportunity to come back like they did in game one. Yep, sounds about right. And on top of that, uh, a lot of people say, you know, he's a Riven one trick, so I'm actually curious what he's going to play. And I mean, he had the so, counter pick here, so he could have punished really hard. Oh, so oh. the ban being left open and Kindred going ahead, getting through, and CLG's just going to pick that up. The Gragas was still open, too. Mm -hmm. And again, that becomes a flex pick here, so it's like, is Jin Air going to start getting rid of the rest of the junglers uh, with the next few picks, or can CLG decide much further down the draft if they're going to play Gragas after all, if they're going to play, you know, Elise in after all, if they're going to pick a different need to carry, or, you know, what goes on there? I like taking away the Alistar, though. I thought Aphrom had some really clutch plays and just saved the game over and over again in that last game. And, of course, they're assuming that the Kindred is going to the jungle, so they have the free time necessary to, to pick up that Gragas later on, and the Gragas-Kindred interaction, as we've seen, is, is pretty important coming in to knock people out of the Lamps respite overall. And, uh, but it looks like CLG yeah, there you go. Snag that one up themselves. <laughs> so, whoa, whoa okay. buddy. That's top bad. Kindred. All right. No, that could be a top Greg. Is there something a soloing Greg? That's, or that's support. Oh, support, actually, support Greg is no, a thing. This is the thing is that we're just, this is just anarchy picks and bans now because now we're just grasping at straws trying to Anarchy didn't quite make it here. That's true. Yeah, no, actually, I guarantee it's a support Greg. It's actually really good against Alistar guarantee. because you can. You can E the, the headbutt pull combo, and the belly's so fat that it'll actually stop. I mean, you'll both, like, <laughs> stun each other, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you can use it as a way to, like, buffer. You can get it away from your AD carry. And then, like, if you Callista ulti and throw Gragas into, I mean, you can get some nasty engagement. I'm just going to say, like, when I put on some weight and my friends are like, well, dude, come on, you got to get in shape. I'd be like, no, I really need to be able to stop those headbutts. You never, <laughs> you never know. I just got to get in there. Hey, his belly used to be bigger, if you remember. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it used to be bigger. But that, yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty surprising choice here on CLG, just trying to lock down all of those forces on their end. Meanwhile, Janair saying, all right, you know what? At least that means that Ash is on our side this time around. Pilot should be able to pick that up, of course. Winged also going to go back to Lee Sin for himself. We have two champions that have displacement as well, so that's going to help out a lot with kicking people out of the Kindred ultimate. I like that pick too. And I think Lee Sin is definitely the best jungle pick into Kindred, specifically because of that. You can pretty much burst her, and then once she ultimates, just kick her out and just finish her off. So overall, it also sounds um, just, it sounds like that they simply just ran out of time. They couldn't decide what to ban on the side of Janair, and it just what? went over. So that's why they missed that ban. It's not because of any penalty or anything like that, just in case people were wondering. So uh, that did give CLG this option, right, of picking up Kindred, Callista, and Gragas. Well, we're going to have to see how that counts against them because letting Gragas through is a pretty big yeah. issue in any circumstance, even if yeah. Kindred was the first pick. Because I'm not sure what Aphromoo could do if that is the support, uh, but if it goes back into Smithy's hands, wherever these picks end up going, that's a lethal Gragas. We've already, it's already been proven yes. to be a crucial pick for TSM success. Oh. What the heck <laughs> I guarantee it's a support Gragas. <laughs> what if it is and it's a mid bar? Is yeah, there, it's mid, is is there, there any bar? It's, it's happening. Fins. There's still hope, okay? I, okay. It's, it's also just great because, as um, they were mentioning on the commentary desk, for one, it's Generic Green Wings' other support player, Sweet, who was really famous for his bard. But in Korea, the one who debuted bard in competitive play was Jay, yeah. his teammate. And then Generic just became the team that was known for their bard. So Afrima now saying, you know what? These days, a lot of other people have caught up. They pick up the bar. I mean, let's be honest. This, uh, these picks for CLG do seem a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, just overall combination-wise. Yeah, I, 
I'm just going to talk about Jin Air because okay. this right. composition, I, I don't even know where half these picks are going. It's so counter logic. Away. It's just, it's it truly there. Is. Yeah. They're like, we knocked out Unicorns of Love. Now we are Unicorns of Love. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you think. You think Zion's gonna play like a top kindred or something? Oh my god! I think it's more likely to be top so, kindred mid fifth. Yeah, that's what I around. was thinking. I mean, we were joking around, but top kindred does seem the most probable. Oh. Mid kindred has a lot of coverage to get to the jungle camps that much hey. easier. They're gonna mess with us, I guarantee. Until yeah, but let's talk about generic green wings then, because that seems pretty straightforward. And said LeBlanc was the last pick instead of Cassidy. So I like the Ash as a reliable hard engage option. I think that's something that they used very well in the previous game. Additionally, picking a more aggressive champion in the mid lane may give Kuzan an opportunity to kind of show off here. And Ryze is overall just an incredibly powerful pick on the patch, and we've seen how degenerate it can get when he gets ahead, when he's able to chain snare and able to lock down those picks. But the biggest issue is while they have a team comp that they know how to execute, they're playing against a team that they've never seen before, that no one has ever seen before. So how this team composition is going to play out is a pretty huge question mark. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to jump into game number two. Don't forget to download the Score Esports app as you follow along to find out more details about player stats and player interviews throughout this weekend here at the Intel Stream Masters. But for now, with the crazy picks from CLG, can they close it out 2-0? Let's find out with Doa, Monte Cristo, and Crapo. All right, thank you, Chobra. We are about to get into game number two between Counter Logic Gaming and the Jin Air Greenwing. CLG just barely, barely pulled it out in game number one. Now Jin Air comes back with this insane composition. I, d I don't even know if I can really ask this, but what do you expect to see in game two? I mean, just judging on the picks, <laughs> I like the interaction between Bard and low mobility carries like Ryze and Ash. Okay. I think it's interesting. Uh, that they flexed uh, Kindred in multiple roles. Uh, nobody really knows where she was going. True. She has been played in mid lane. She's super snowball, though. Like, if she gets behind, uh, she, she's done for. Like, but you can snowball if you get a good level three or four gank. It's actually quite potent. But either way, that mid lane matchup is going to swing super hard. Well, yeah, and we saw even Janair playing around with some of these flex picks, taking that rise, looking like he was going go in the mid lane. But uh, Kuzan's played LeBlanc before. He did roam very heavily on the LeBlanc game that he's played in champion so far. And this is a, a composition that Janair can really make a lot of picks with. Look how much crowd, single target crowd control they have. Setting yep. up with an Ash arrow to rise or LeBlanc first is going to be very effective. CLG, however, they're really reliant on Xmethy's ults, which is good because Six Smithy's really been performing on Gragas, so he's been able to isolate targets, but they're going to have to rely on that. And CLG, they got to survive the early game because, Krepa, you and I were talking, and you pointed out, no wave clear. Yeah, zero wave clear. If you're a fan of wave clear, you may just want to close your stream right now because either team, there's <laughs> that some... That one guy just did it out I love like... wave clear. <laughs> oh, done. Done. Yeah, by our powers combined, maybe Ryze and LeBlanc can effectively clear waves together, but that's even a little bit iffy. But for me, this, this game will boil down to the junglers. Both Wing and Xmiffy have so much responsibility because any of these matchups tilt either way. Like, you have Ryze into Fizz, whoever gets ahead can really dominate that matchup. If you have LeBlanc into uh, Kindred, whoever gets ahead can really dominate that matchup. So and that only happens with the help of the junglers. Yeah, it seems like a lot is going to depend on Pilot's Ash arrows as well, too. I mean, we saw uh, Stixay do okay with it, but I feel like Pilot you know, might be a little bit more experienced with the Ash arrows. And we did see them use the Ash pick in the Casper Cup as well. And some aerodynamics coming in there. Aerodynamics, the that's right. <laughs> yeah. You got it, man. <laughs> well, I think it's about time to move on to Summoner's Rift, guys, for game number two between CLG and the Jin Air Greenwing. CLG with a chance to 2-0 Jin Air. I think we're going to see this one go to game three. That's still my official prediction, but we will find out as we go out onto the map, see who takes it. Well, regardless from CLG, I mean, coming into this with, you know, all the, the drama around losing double lift and uh, Stixay looks flawed, but they've been yes. playing around him quite well. And he did hit some of those arrows that really mattered in the last game to, start, to stall it out even further. Uh, and they've shown that their macro play is, is still pretty good. And so on uh, is in a tough situation. Well, flash for flash. See, what they were trying to do there was force the rise to rise to move to this choke point that CLG is right in right there. Aphrom was in the Baron pit. He tried to, he, they wanted to hurt him into that choke point and then queue over with the Bard. So really cheeky little play there from CLG. Um, luckily for Soan, he actually chose a two path upwards. You know, I, I just love this comp by CLG, not necessarily for anything it may or may not do, but just for the simple fact that people are questioning, 
how deep are CLG's champion pools? You know, what new stuff can they bring? And it doesn't really get any more random and new than this. I mean, it does surprise me that they're showing some of these picks as they're 1-0 up in the semifinal, because you think that maybe you want to save some of these shenanigans for a best of five against Origin, should they make it there, but they're uh, certainly not pulling any punches. They're showing us some very fun stuff. I yeah. mean, yeah. Well, I mean, you can always mix and match with some of these picks throughout that next best of five if they make it too. Yeah, they're bringing the solo queue experience to Summer's Rift right now. Um, limited practice, so maybe they just play whatever they're comfortable on and they try to put that in the framework of, of good shot calling. Interesting invade here coming in early on. Hoogie, wow, getting a lot of damage down with that Dance of Arrows. Yeah, and you got to wonder how close this LeBlanc can really get. It's a very fragile pick early on, and so far, Kuzan just completely zoned out of everything. Yeah, going over the red buff immediately, too, so just taking advantage of the fact that uh, they did blow that flash from the rise early on. No bones about playing aggressive from CLG. I like this. They're dedicating so so hard to the top side of the map because not only is Xmithy already in position for early top lane ganks or gank mid from the left side, Wing is actually has no incentive to actually go to the top side either because his jungle has been cleared. Yeah, let's see what he can do. He looks like he's going to be heading around right now. Huhi doing a great job of denying a ton of early CS and Wing is going to head over to the enemy red buff. TP used by Soan to get into that top lane, but that means it's still going to be up for Darshan. I mean, with lane control and teleport still up, if Darshan can push in the rise and they can look for a level 3 dive with the Gragas, that could be yeah, the game over. So on no flash. Blue buff given over to him, though, as a result of that jungling. So he is going to have some tools to play around with in that top side. Does have to be careful. It's when he takes his blue buff in the meantime. And there is a swarm of sentinels, but not going <laughs> to see Wing there. He's stealthily taking that red buff. Maybe not intentionally stealthy, but he's going to get it anyway. Kuzan taking another big amount of damage. Goes back in with the distortion. Whoa, manages to pop the passive. Who he taking quite a bit himself, too. But with the yeah. jungler not around, he knows he's pretty safe. Wing coming in now, though. Yeah, not the best trade there for Huhi. He took a lot of yeah. minion damage in that trade, and now Winged has to get out of there, and he's just going to get over to the minion wave to avoid X Smithy coming from the rear end. Of course, when they are pushed up in the bottom side, they can't make a play as Afro already on the roam from the bottom lane. Speaking of the bottom lane, Aphromoo heading back down there. Yet again, you can harass quite a bit with Bard, but against a lane like Alistar Ash, you're going to be able to sustain against it too. So it's kind of a moot point as far as the poking goes really on. Yeah, a bit of a missed opportunity here. Rise with no flash that decided to push the wave. Lee Sin clearly in the bottom side of the map since he had no jungle caps up in the top side. Darshan. CLG should have probably went for, for at least some, some sort of pressure on that Rise. They forced so on Slash early and they're not capitalizing on it at all. Hmm. It's true. Looks like Winged is coming up now. It's no killer. word spotting him. You know, with the health of Darshan up in this top lane, I you know I wondered if there was maybe like a dive opportunity available for Jin'Air, but they just didn't have the deep wards, I guess, to try it. Yeah, it's still so risky, and CLG, you really just don't want them to snowball. You have to be confident in the late game. I mean, Jin'Air is going to be much better in the late game, uh, I think, with the rise Here coming into play. Now they're going to try to chase Soan away. Soan again with no flash. And just like Krepo was worried about trying to take advantage of that Ignite use. And they're going to come in and finish him off. There it is. First blood goes to Darshan. A trade on each side as X Smithy gets taken out. But it looks like it might be two for Jin Air. Can Darshan escape? Wing chasing. There's the flash. He's got the red buff. Darshan burning. And there's another kill for the Jin Air Green Wings. And that top lane is frozen too. That's the biggest part right there. So that's going to play into Soan's favor. Darshan just used his teleport. That play right there, it just, it was too late. They were already in position. Wing could farm up to level three or four, then make his way to the top lane to counter gank there. He almost blocked the body slam. It was a really nice move that he tried to do there. Yep. But not only that, Ryze actually ended up with one of those kills too. Ideally, you know, in that bad situation, you'd hope that maybe Wing would get both of them, but it kind of ended up in a bit of a wash. And now Sowan's going to have a big TP advantage in about 30 seconds. And that'll be uh, interesting to see whether they can make a play down on this bottom side after Ash hits six. And we'll see. After move a little bit low, Jay comes in for the knock up there. The headbutt pulverize combo. And this was a big question that we had because we really haven't seen Stixay and Aphromoo in a 2v2 lane yet. How are they going to fare? Uh, how is Stixay going to do uh, against maybe some TP plays in the bottom side? And that may be a major factor in this one. Well, just straight up 2v2. I mean, Pilot and Shay are no joke. That's a pretty solid bot lane. So definitely a good test 
for Stixay and this new CLG bot lane duo. Yeah, and one thing that we haven't talked about yet is Winged. It's like he is trying to draw some aggression. Cosmic Binding goes down, but CLG's duo not going to bite. Wing just going to head out the backside. Is that I believe that if CLG wins this game, this will be the first time ever that a North American team has beaten a Korean team in a best of series. I think you're right. Yeah, wow. Meanwhile, exhaust on to Jay. Afro has a flash away. Afro in a lot of trouble. That heal barely keeps him alive. Oh, is he going to live? He makes it out with basically no health remaining, sub 50 hit points. Darshan, meanwhile, trapped by that rune prison, but the trap is sprung, and so on the flash to try to get away. Can he make it, though? No support coming from the Jin Air side. They've got the ward as well, 2x Smithy coming in. There's a slow from the barrel, and there's another kill for CLG. I'll tie it up in kills. Yeah, Soan just pushed very far up right there. He still has his TP to get back into lane should he want to go farm. And we'll see how much damage Jin Air can get onto this turret. A freeze going to be initiated by Darshan here. Who he coming around will find winged in his jungle. And yeah. Kuzan, uh, kind of been a, a bit of a non-factor this game, and he's been denied a whole hell of a lot of CS so far by Huhi. Yeah, Huhi's certainly been doing a good job in the mid lane, but things have been a bit sketchy elsewhere on the map. Kuzan just trying to stay alive, stay semi-even in CS. Man, taking a lot of damage from that Kindred. There's a passive popped yet again. Huhi takes a bit himself, but not enough to really worry too much about. Might be best for Green Wings to avoid this top lane where they're losing. Hang on, arrows coming out. Oh. Thinking of Kindred. Oh, Ooh. he nailed him. Can Kuzan capitalize? That's a lot of damage. Here comes Shay. There's a knockup, and that could nearly be a kill. Can who he escape? He's in the Kindred ult. Can't get out of there. Oh, he gets taken down. Kuzan with the kill. What an arrow from Pilot. I think he could have waited. I he need to get the heal. for the heal right there before. Yeah. I totally agree. Aphromu takes a magical journey out of danger there. But that was a fantastic arrow from oh, Pilot. Kidding. Well, Pilot's been an interesting AD carry in Korea. He's been very inconsistent. It looked like when he debuted, and he did split time with Captain Jack this year pretty significantly, but he started out as this player, as we see Wing taking the blue buff here, that he really liked. He was great on Corky. And he was good at these Trinity Force AD carries. And at the start of the summer season, he started playing Vayne and playing Vayne very well. And it, it looked like he was turning a new leaf. And Pilot now showing up on this Ash is something because he just he hasn't been the best at non-caster AD carries over the run of his career. Yeah. yeah you definitely don't think of Ash when you think of Pilot's best champions, but he's changing our minds. I mean, Ash was out of the meta for very long, too. Very few teams really can make use of her she's she's so different than all the other ad carries you really need to use that arrow to make a pick and Jinair could do that they have teleport available on so on so next arrow could be arrow into teleport maybe make a play on the bottom avoid that really really tricky situation they have going on in the top lane where smithy and darshan are showing that they will have really good synergy right now yeah darshan is falling a little bit behind in terms of farm too so that he has been zoned out by so on and he didn't actually end up picking up that kill from the last gang. So slight gold advantage here so far for so on. But they haven't really, truly slowed down the rise yet. Yeah. That's going to be the real danger once we get late game. I mean, one of the real dangers anyway, coming in from the Junior Green Wings. That rise Another gets arrow. rolling. Speaking of the rise, taking a lot of damage up in top. Doesn't even need the arrow. That rise is long gone. No help there. Nope. <laughs> I guess he would have hit his own teammate with the arrow if, if uh, he would have been alive. But no, yeah. he wouldn't have. That's impossible. Yeah, really no help. Nice dive there from Darshan. Gets another kill. That's what he needs to start. Really snowballing oh, nice. his way. Great binding. binding. Great pick from Afro. Hey, they can dive that. They can the make kill. the turret invulnerable with the Bard ultimate and go for the dive. Let's see what actually happened here. Just Afro oh, okay. move coming Fizzle. in. Yeah, easy yep. to see. Yeah, that's about that for the rise. Did make that look quite easy. Nice tanking for Afro there. Yeah. Making sure that the Fizz gets out nice and safe. Che now in the mid lane. Oh, there's a knockup on the Che. Gets hit with that body slam just a bit. Takes a lot of damage. Nice explosive cast by X Smithy. We saw how good he was on that Gragas yesterday. Proves it again right now. Helping who he pick up a kill. Yeah, just not level six yet there for the Alistair. And with the flash just barely down, not much they could do, but Che just wandering straight in. We're still looking at a pretty even game in terms of gold, but CLG. And holding on, getting some kills. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need right now. Just a couple kills here and there. Looks like we're in for another pretty close game. Both teams really looking for picks, so need to get creative. 
And I like that Afrom is roaming in. In, in a pick versus pick comp, Bard is actually really fun to play. Oh. Here we go. Doesn't quite hit him with the temper of fate. So on just well, definitely he... dodges that with the speed from the Rise ult, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he just popped his ultimate right there yeah, to get out yeah. of it. So that was uh... a bit preemptive, though. You can actually just walk up a little more and then force him to either walk into your teammates, at least, if you want to juke it, so then Darshan can connect the damage. I think there was a bit too much distance on that, but th the concept of the play is correct. You know, walking up top, magical journey into a bush that you assume is not warded, and then go for the surprise ulti as he's going for a lost it, but good reaction from so on. All right, Huhi did get the mark onto the Scuttle Crab right there, so they're going to try and take it out, and he is going to get it. that, so a little bit more damage there for Huhi. That's a nice pickup. He's actually had a couple Scuttle Crabs, and Janair going to react just by going straight for this dragon. Now, can they get this dragon? Doesn't look like CLG is really organized enough to put up a defense, so Jin Air will be getting the first dragon of the game. They're dragging TPs, though. So on is way out of bounds. No teleport available. Has to base and then walk all the way to the top lane. So wow. Smithy could technically path over and go for an instant redive. Yeah, and Darshan has caught up in CS as a result of this play, so sacrificing a bit of farm onto Rise in order to make this work. Blue buff grabbed by Kuzan. And they're sure trying to make sure they don't have any wards there. We'll find a Smithy lurking around in the river. Yeah, Huhi just pushing his lane up again on that Kindred. Yeah, see, looks like there. So on is going to be able to save this tower. Lots of damage done, though, because of Darshan's sheen. And now this, I mean, Kuzan's been really well contained by Huhi. He's setting up these big zones with Wolf and not really being able to push out and start roaming. Yeah, just like you said, Monty, sticks it kind of be kind of isolated from his team here. Just left alone farming on Kalista, the champion that you would usually require your support to be with to really proc that passive. So CLG opting for a very roam heavy approach with Aphromoo and just letting sticks sit there in the bottom lane. It does allow Jinair to use their AD carry as a global threat with the arrows. Really incredibly hard to land, but big payoff if they do land. Indeed. So just a board clearing going out now for Jinair. It's like we're just resetting. So we can see maybe a use of TP again. Darshan's is up, so on. Still waiting on his as Pilot. This is Volley just to clear out the wave. One of their few forms of wave clear here. A very low wave clear game in general, which means that we've had all of these opportunities for roams. When it yeah. takes so long to push out the wave, you do tend to end up with higher kill games because you have more opportunities to move around the map. Well, Pilot and Shay protecting their bottom turret for the moment anyway. Getting that first dragon has got to feel Pretty good for Jyn'Air at this point. Yeah, they Excuse sacrificed me. a bit of a lead in the top lane to do it, though. So it, it did have its price, but they seem like they really want to play around Dragons here. Pink Ward in that brush. Wing trying to creep into the lane for a gank, or at least a counter gank here, as Solon just wants to make sure that he can get this lane, these minions all the way into the enemy turret. Yeah, he's just going to back off after that, but they're not going to check for that Pink Ward in the lane. I guess not. Pink's going down on red buff. Looks like that's where Wing wants to go. Meanwhile, Pilot takes the first turret of the game for Jyn Air. That's the price of Aphromoo's roaming right there. They did get a lot of tower damage down on the bottom side, and they did zone off Stixay and Aphromoo for a little bit earlier on in this game, so just to that chip damage. Yep. 1v1, it's incredibly hard for Ash to, uh, for Kalista to really do anything against an Ash. Repetitive poke, you keep him at distance. Worst case, you have, uh, you have the arrow to really punish that. Smithy's gonna find that pink ward. Yes, he is. We'll get seen, though, so they're trying to just to make sure they can push up. So on, actually just going and moving in here. They're going to try and set up a pick with his Ash moving into the top side. They want to see if they can get some damage done, but nope, just going to move Ash straight in and have Rise cover the bottom lane. They want to move their wave clear into the lane with the low turret. Into a fizz, though. That's pretty risky. Well, you got to do something, I suppose. Teleport down to bot lane. Oh, we'll see how well Soan can do it defending this. Should be able to clear out the wave quite nicely. Yeah, he's actually going to TP in. Coming in, Che is right there to protect, though. The TP canceled now for Darshan. Yeah, two TPs actually used. Of course, Soan getting down yeah. there. So actually having to flash, though, in order to avoid the Tempered Fate. Yeah, that's definitely what you want to do. Tempered Fate, force a flash. Anybody can flash it. But then the cooldown, obviously, you're trading cooldowns. You're trading flash for a Tempered Fate, and that's definitely in your favor. Darshan here looking. Oh. Spots winged. He's in a two for one. No backup possible. Smithy going to come up, though. He's going to be coming through the river. They want to punish him for taking this turret. There's yep. the ult. Oh, ult right on the pilot. A little bit of damage to start things off. Darshan, though, has to run away. Ash arrow connects, and Darshan could be in trouble. Kicked into the wall. That's more damage, but here comes X Smithy. 
And with who he on the way to, Jenner needs to back off. A pilot has been so on point with his arrow, yeah. predicting that. And now we just see Che getting that knockup, trying to force him off the turret. Who he wants to get mid lane. The CLG really wants to take this turret. Looks like they'll have to wait a little bit longer. Jin, they are able to defend it for the moment. Pretty yep. bold, though, to go for that play from, from Dashan. 2v1, full vision. Uh, there may have been a bit of miscommunication, thinking that Xmithy was maybe a little bit closer, but he actually ended up being. Yeah. All right, so on now here, so no mid lane, but there's a lot of chip damage on these Jin Air turrets right now, and that could result in a pretty fast CLG gold advantage. Yeah. Che knew there was a <laughs> ward there. He has a ping. Still deciding to recall will get canceled. The big question is right now, dragging up in about a minute, who's going to be able to take it? If CLG takes this mid lane, they'll be putting themselves in a pretty good spot to try something. Yeah, they're really, this is CLG, they're going to get it this time. They tried so many times last game, finally succeed relatively early at the mid lane tower kill here. And uh, CLG in both of these games has really just been playing for pressure advantages. Uh, they haven't been too likely to skirmish, they just want to group play for turrets, and that's about it. And then play for the split push. It won them last game. It's going to get them another turret right here. So everything's starting to fall for Jin Air, and they're going to nearly catch up in gold. Yeah, pretty just, impressive. Just like that, game pretty much evened up. Jin Air really needs to focus on the second dragon. Uh, try and react and take down a mid turret of their own, but they really haven't gotten that much damage because Huhi has been so dominant. Now with the Trinity Force, that's a really good power spike for a dragon fight. Yeah. coming through right now. Kuzan's still just kind of sitting on a Morello Namakon and a blasting one. He's actually not going to do too terribly much damage at this point in time, and so on. He's scaling too with that Tyran Rod of Ages, so I think they're going to have to give this drag up. Yeah, they should definitely do it, because if CLG is tracking the so on's flash timer, it is an incredibly easy temper fade to use in that fight, and then you can really put Ryze in an uncomfortable situation where he gets piled on. Well, they see a slow push. Ping's in the top side. Looks like Jyn Air's minions are going to be pushing towards that tier two, so it may just be a delay tactic, a stall tactic here from Jyn Air. See if they can waste some of that time that CLG is spending. CLG clearing out plenty of wards, too, just to give themselves a better position. Yeah, Jyn Air should definitely not take this fight. This is the wrong timing for them. Fizz has the Barilla now counted the Sheen. Very dangerous. You know Jyn Air, though. They may well, want to try this anyway. I don't know if I know new Jyn Air, Doha. This is very different than the Jyn Air I that... I think we've got a pretty good idea of new Jyn Air at this point. Just go nuts, go ham all the time. Ooh. Oh, that tempered fate is something CLG could really have used. I don't like the distance. There's a certain distance, yeah. which is like one and a half screens, where tempered fate is almost impossible to dodge, especially if you're on boots one. I think I don't think it's... I think it's disrespecting your opponent if you throw it out from that far. Well, CLG is going to go for this. Kuzan comes in for a lot of damage on the Alphamu, dragging it half health. The CLG should be able to get it. And yeah, Jyn yeah, you just got to pull back. Fight. No, you don't do that fight right now. You're not real. Jyn Air, their goal is not to win this game based off of Dragon Stacks. Their goal is to win with huge amounts of late game damage and picks. And so if you can't find the pick, if everybody's already grouped up, don't worry about it. Try and reset for more vision later on so you can keep using that Ash Arrow because that's what's been effective for them. I mean, the fact is you've got the first dragon, so you don't need to worry about a really fast five dragon stack by CLG. You've certainly got time to play it safe. Who's on? Trying to do some damage here. Yeah, trying to zone them out so that maybe they could deal some damage to the mid turret, but CLG just too much there right now. And who he's mid lane kindred definitely doing some work so far i don't know i'm not sure if it's doing enough work because the low range on clg in the late game means that they are insanely dependent on good barrels yep and they're very prone to just get annihilated by rise i mean if you're playing a rise and you're playing against two carries or three carries one of which is melee range and the other two are sub 500 it's incredibly easy to just punish that and just whittle them down I mean, that's a big question right now, is that, yeah, CLG is doing well, but are they doing well enough? You know, are they going to be able to close things out fast enough to avoid that late game from Jyn Air? Well, they're going to get another turret, and Darshan is making a bunch of money off of these solo turret kills, and again, he's just been doing work on that split push. He's about 600 gold up on Soan right now, and a lot of that is from the just the fact that he's been there pushing down the towers. You have to question the... Kalista picked thematically though. If you're if you're still yeah. and you you play a style that revolves around the top four members of your map and you leave Stixay kind of isolated, then you know what use is picking a an AD carry that scales into the mid game but not necessarily into the late game. You can make a lot of plays with Fate's Call, but they don't seem to really put Stixay in a position where you can make those plays. Hasn't used a single a single ultimate this entire game. Yeah. Well, we're just gonna be in a period of waiting for a while. Yep. 
This is your kind of game. You <laughs> wanted this. <laughs> I wanted, yes. Deep lane freezes, rise slowly powering up over time. Yeah, that's a ton of fun. The sword of Rhizocles. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so definitely hanging over their head. We're just going to ignore that ward. So we need to take it right now. And just backing off. They just want to play very defensively for the moment. It's a very different look from uh, Jynair that we're seeing this game from what we saw in game number one. And, you know, if they can manage to play for a late game and then play that late game well, that really says a lot about their team. After losing a game like they just did, to play methodically, to play safe and close it out like they're trying to do, uh, that'd be pretty oh. good. Yeah, who he. Respect from uh, from Soan, though. He could have stood at the edge of the brush and went for that play, but he's respecting potential backup. CLG have a lot of fog of war in their advantage. If you look at the vision that CLG has, and more importantly, the vision denial, yep. you see five, five. Vink wards <laughs> on the map for CLG right now. Yes. Very good warning. So you just really don't know if they're on the bottom side of the map or not, or whether they are moving up through their own jungle. They have everything from the river downward under their control, so you can't take those risks. The problem is, though, that's usually the setup for a 1-3-1. But because Pilot can always move into Fog of War of his own, the threat of the arrow in a 1-3-1 just tilts any of these matchups. So CLG kind of scared to push on farther than their vision limit. And that's where all the objectives are. Tier 2 towers, maybe some jungle camps. So pretty much a stalemate. So Teleport on. coming in. Yep, let's we'll see if they make a play here. Not quite. Was that the Kindred Mark? It was the Kindred, Kindred Mark, Mark that someone oh, was I got standing on top of. You got <laughs> trolled. I was like, what's that swirly thing there on the map? Nope. <laughs> yeah, definitely standing on top yeah, of the okay. Mark. So it looked like a halo in the, the TP coming in, but yes. I just want some action, okay? You just want some action? Well, this is typical Jynair. You don't get action. You get low kills. Yeah, I was going to say. Waiting until the late game while they dance around the map. This, like, is, this is much more the Jynair we're used to well, in Korea, isn't it? But. At the same time, oh. Oh, Kuzan's trapped against the wall. And can they actually finish him off? No, not quite, but it was close. Where's the Fates Call? You could have Fates Call predicted the distortion. Aphrom was skilled enough of a player to really get over there. And he went for a pick. We'll sub you in next game, don't worry. I'm just, I just look, look for the kills, man. I just want to see somebody <laughs> die, OK? Well, <laughs> you're not going to see that. But when we, when we talk about Jynair in the last game, they were winning some of those late game team fights or going even when they didn't have Baron buff, and when they had a clearly inferior composition, CLG doing a great job on this tower, though. Moving from lane to lane, sieging down, just chipping away at the tier twos. But Jynair may have just changed their mindset. They said, look at this, we, we nearly won that game at 50 minutes, and we kind of didn't have any business being that close that late, given the fact that they gave up three Barons. Sure, they, they did some work with the fifth Dragon stack, and they had just a poor composition late. So let's, let's just play more relaxed this time, get the rise for ourselves, and try and make this kind of composition work and just be very patient. LeBlanc will get big, given enough time. That's right. There's a Hex Drinker pick now uh, on the Kindred, so they have to do have to factor that in when they try to annihilate her, especially in interaction with the ultimate. Kind of makes things tricky. If you try to burst her in CC and you think you can just get her just enough right before she uh, can even cast the ultimate, and then Hex Drinker Shield pops in, can change the entire scope of a team fight. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Looks like they are going for Rise here. Yep, Temper Fade, use another flash. That See the magical catch. journey. Yeah, and this is a great way to slowly control this game. They get that flash out 15 seconds before the dragon spawns. Heading back down now. They've got a huge ring of pink wards, so it looks like Jynair just going to be giving this one up too. Unless they really want to try their luck, but this would be a pretty terrible decision right now because you have to see that target in order to reliably hit that ash arrow, so you're not probably going to get much right here. They do have one ward in, but Kuzan already chunked out. Oh, They're gonna go for it. Wow, they catch Huhi. Wow, knock him up, and Huhi's gonna go down. Dragon taken by CLG, but can Jynair get any more kills? Fla oh, Che flashes, gets the headbutt, but CLG still manages to disengage. Jynair used a lot, tons of summoners used, and only came away with it, or came away with one kill from it. And they may lose wing. Trapped against the wall, no, he'll make it out with the safeguard. Well, there is a big minion wave in the top lane, though. They did initiate a slow push, and that will be all lost. Now, the question is, can they actually get some sort of turret from this? They're going to keep trying to make picks, and Whoa. Afro's going to go down. Nice pick by Kuzan, getting in there and getting the damage done. 
And CLG needs to worry about that. This LeBlanc is starting to do a lot of damage. Question for me is, is this worth it? They need to get that mid lane turret down, and they've kept sticking around the bottom side. Sure, they got a kill, and fortunately for them, they delayed the recalls, but there's no one really to take down the mid turret right now. And Wing, he's got the warrior in chat, may have enough damage, but Callista's moving up. It seems like, what... like he does. Yeah, he'll get it. I'm a big fan of the, the actions oh, here from the wow. Green Wings. Barely get the tower. It's low enough for somebody to later on walk up and just whack it down. One hit, man. They really punished CLG's overextension. They got one pick on CLG. CLG still opted in for the Oops. contest on an area 4v5 for no reason. And they're making these sloppy plays just like that fish right there. They're, they're going for fights they shouldn't even go for. Like, why? There's no purpose fighting over that area in the bottom side of the map. Dragon is down. I mean, unless you really like Crux, I don't know why you're fighting over that area so much. I know you really like Yeah, exactly. So I would have fought that area. Kind of thing, yeah. That's why I'm not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my obsession for Krug lost me my passion for the game. Did you lose your, your passion? Yep. Just, just one more Krug. Just one more. Just give me one more. Do you have to go into Krug rehab? <laughs> They're like, this is a grump. Here, only grumps for a week. Just whittle me down. Yeah. My method on. <laughs> You know, I wonder, too, how much damage that top lane Tier 2 for CLG took. There was a, a wave there for quite a while. Had to do a bit. You actually got it quite oh, wow. low. There's yeah. a lot of damage that's been going on to that top lane. And the slow pushing has been better this time from Jyn'Air. CLG definitely had an advantage in that in the last game. But th that top lane Tier 2 is nearly dead. It's sitting at about 350 HP right now. Yeah, that uh, slow push for Jyn'Air really spent a lot of time while everything was happening by Dragon, and it paid off. Meanwhile, Jyn'Air just trying to control their lanes for now. I suppose you just kind of farm and wait for the next dragon, huh? I mean, this is going to be a slow game, realistically. I, we saw last game how Sowon is actually a very cautious player. He was rarely, of course, he might just die here right as I say that. But he's got a ton of wards, though. I mean, it's look, okay. he's got wards in try, he's got wards in lane. And Sowon was being cautious about not pushing past his ward line with that ribbon uh, over and over and over again. CX Smithy taking a little bit of damage there and trying to clear out some control over the Baron. Last game was actually sped up a lot due to the double teleport from Jyn'Ai Greenwings, either in their favor or against them. Sometimes they would double TP to a side and CLG would get so much at the other side of the map, or they would make a pick and get an objective out of that. Now there's only a single tele teleport on each side, and that kind of plays into the stalemate that we're seeing here. But I think CLG is comfortable with playing the waiting game because they have an incredibly fast Baron with Kindred, with Fizz, and Kalista, and almost <laughs> that's, that's yeah, not as fast as you can get, really. As fast as you can get, and also it's unsmitable. Uh oh. So on. Has to back off here. He burns that ultimate just to get away. Looks like he'll make it. Yeah, it. He's just been so cautious. Like, he's just not getting caught out whatsoever. He's stifling a lot of the moves they want to make, and now he's got a full Seraph's Embrace. He's got a full Rod of Ages, and this is where the Rise starts to become so exceptionally dangerous. Looks like CLG may have found an angle, though, to finally finish off this mid-tier, too. Yeah, it looks like they will get it. Yep, there it is. Great zoning there by Xsmithy. Yep. And nice play. They just keep giving him the runaround on the map, and they're a step ahead again as Darshan gets here. They, they can kill these. They have two Sheens. They can take down towers very fast. The BTF two pilot. Sheens. Arrow comes through. Oh, does it really well. Would have hit 6A, but he cleans out of it. Jyn'Air engages anyway. Who he low again. There's the Kindred Alt pop. So on, very low, taken out. A lot of low health members across the board. Double kill already for Kuzan before he went down. That Tempered Fate may have oh, bought CLG enough time. Looks like Jyn'Air is going to have a tough time pursuing. Winged barely lives. That was good Cosmic Binding. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. More than that. Really close fight right there. Two for two in the end, but CLG <laughs> escaping with flashing red health bars. Pilot couldn't really get into that fight until the very end, but he did land that arrow. Stixe, fast fingers. This time around, Stixe did get that faster QSS, and it really paid off right there. Caesar coming in. Actually hit Afro right there, oh, so okay. he used the QSS for nothing. Just kidding. <laughs> Psych. Well, he was fast at it anyway. This one really could have gone either way. Kuzan certainly did quite a bit of damage. Pilot just barely far enough, and that tempered fate, man. I think that really saves CLG from getting ace there. Yep. That's what I like so much about Cosmic Binding, because the stun only triggers once both targets have been hit. So very often you will hit part one, they will flash <laughs> away, make a dash, and then second target's hit. Then they get connected, so you see this very elongated Cosmic <laughs> Binding just stretching out. It's for, uh, quite the peculiar visual. It's cosmic, so theoretically it should be very long. Well, drag it up in 30 seconds, and many, many pings here coming in from Jyn'Air. 
And this has been the focus of most of this game so far. Solon starting to get quite fearsome now, building up some more MR to deal with this Fizz just a little bit better, who has been sitting on Sheen for a while and is trying to get some more magic resistance, but it's going to be incredibly difficult for CLG to fight this. And Zach Smithy getting caught out a little uh, bit. He is a little bit. We'll see if he can get away. Arrow misses. Close call there. Bit of miscommunication. They weren't quite sure whether they should follow up, mostly due to the floor of war hiding behind Nick Smithy. It's also very dangerous to just use too many abilities on a tank. Yeah. To turn around really quickly, especially with Kindred in the game. Yeah, so getting the wards down on Baron and Kuzan. Whoa! Whoa! Man, that was bold. Nearly gets taken out. Tempered Fate catches the clone. Kuzan makes it up. So on, not so lucky though. Nice explosive cast. Gets knocked up one more, and that's going to be another kill for Huhi as Jin Air has to back away. They may give up a dragon because of this. Yeah, Tempered Fate catching So on right there at the very start of the fight. So they had a time to set up on him. CLG definitely going to take this next dragon. That's going to be number three for them. They're starting to really pull ahead in that dragon race. Yeah, CLG doing a fantastic job predicting whenever Kuzan jumps in on that LeBlanc, making him low, and then. Yeah, beautiful temper fate, and Shay walked into the second part of the Cosmic Battle. Let's watch that again, how Kuzan gets so low. Yeah, just, nice dodge away there from immediately Stixay. Too. And then you look at that ultimate, and then the follow-up. Shay's gonna walk back into it, oh, so, so well played by Aphromoo. Yeah, and then immediately too, isolating Soan with that cast while simultaneously ejecting the Alistair from the fight. Very nicely done by Xmithy, who really has been on point. Yeah, his Gragas is looking so, so good this tournament. That's a bit too many wars, Afro. <laughs> yeah, you may not need all those. Well, he's not going to clear any of them, in fact, but he oh, did wow. find the field of warding right there. Has to be careful. Going to take yeah, a significant a amount of damage. I mean, this is a four-kill LeBlanc that we're talking about. Yeah, and Afro move went Frozen Heart first. Huh. He likes his CDR. He gets the, an Ash and a double, double uh, AP composition. It's kind of interesting, one could say. I could argue for it being... It's optimal. Already an Aegis, I guess. Uh, Xmithy getting caught out right here. He is completely surrounded. Gonna turn on to Che, but Jin Air probably gonna be able to take him down. The rest of CLG frantically trying to catch up. They use the arrow on him anyway. Not a lot left when the rest of CLG gets here. Who he knocked into the team, though. That was a pretty dangerous move for the mid laner on CLG to try. And they pay for it. It's a 3v5, but Darshan, of course, what else would Darshan be doing? He's off on the other side of the map, killing turrets. Genera. They're going right for that Baron, though. They may give up an inhibitor if they focus on it, though. I think they should just go for the Baron it. right now. Just yeah. go ahead and take it. You have a yep. rise. He's in a, in a muff of the power spike right now that you could totally just do this very quickly. Uh, now, what will they trade for it will be the question. Che taking a lot of damage and getting stalled out, forced to use that flash. Oh, Baron taken out by Genera. Recalls immediately. I don't think, uh, okay, Darshan a little bit. Nervous about sticking around and going for that inhibitor. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Send him on his own magical journey, I guess. 6A coming over the wall, but gonna get hit oh, actually okay. with that Blade of the Ruined King. Knocked back. Goodbye. Oh. And rended to death. That was brutal. Kuzan coming in though. Uh -oh. Can he find a pick here? On to Afro move. Q landed. Wing gonna chase that so on. TP's in from behind. Stixay in a lot of trouble here. Trying to kite away. They're gonna settle for a kill on to Alfremu. TP canceled. Darshan not wanting to try that. He's like, what? I don't I don't interact with other players. I only interact <laughs> with turrets. <laughs> well, Stixay kicked away. Still alive though. CLG turns it around onto Wing for the shutdown. Darshan enabled PvP. Never mind. <laughs> Oh, that's a lot of damage on the pilot. There's a double kill for Fizz. Sohan on his own. So long, Sohan. Triple kill for Darshan. And wow, what a mistake by Jin Air trying to go in on that. They overextended and allowed themselves just to be picked off one by one by one. That Baron not really going to mean anything right now. Death timers are still low, so it doesn't look like the CLG will be able to easily take an inhibitor off of that, but very poorly played Baron by Janair. Yeah, and some fantastic kiting overall from Stick to earlier parts of this fight. Now, this is slightly, yeah, unlucky, lucky call, whatever you want, CLG turn here, but look at Darshan, really good fish here on pilot, and they clean up. Kindred coming down from the bottom of your screen, kind of dealing with the LeBlanc and the Rice there. Yeah, just a huge amount of damage, and Buhi, who started out this little sequence of events with some 
really interesting dives into the enemy team actually does get a good cut off at the end to make up for his previous mistakes. So basically canceling out the effect of the Baron that they lost. And that's absolutely huge because they opened an inhibitor up as a result of trading for that Baron. And then they nullified the Baron immediately afterwards. So that advantage really CLG. Yep, absolutely. Ahead in dragons, ahead in turrets, ahead in kills, ahead in gold. Well, ahead in every category. But can they close the game out? It's looking good so far. And a 2-0 for CLG over Jin Air. You talk about the strength of this new roster, I think nobody can really argue with that after a series like this. We're looking at a scary late game, though. Once these Quicksilver Sashes get picked up on the carries, sure. then later on we can we can drop the fish on the floor, walk away if, you're, if your name's Pilot. Later on as well, we're looking at the Zeeks from Che. That can amplify Ash's damage even more. So one is never going to stop scaling, um, so... Late game is still, still incredibly tricky from CLG, but they do have the two tools to make very creative fights. Tempered Fate, Kindred Ultimate, all these tools that we don't really usually see in a lot of these games. So if CLG has the mechanics down there, they can shape the team fights into their advantage. Smithy walking through a ward into the mid lane. So Jinair has a pretty good idea of where everyone's at. Dragon up in about 40, 45 seconds. Certainly something Jinair needs to be aware of. A fourth dragon for CLG. It's not something that Jin Air wants hanging over their head for the rest of the game. Darshan going all the way down to bot lane, though, and with no TP, Jin Air's got a little bit of time to move in on this dragon. Yeah, they have some time to get vision control. He'll be done clearing that wave by the time that the actual dragon spawns, but they're going to lose quite a few wards as a result of this. There's another big minion wave that Jin Air had prepped. They do get some chunk damage down on Kuzan, though, which is quite helpful. Yeah, it's really important that they clear wards uh, on Jinair's side so Kuzan can come out of a brush because if they see Kuzan setting up for the distortion, arrow goes oh. from Pilot, field goal. That's three points in football, but it's nothing in League of Legends. They're trying just to isolate them, but uh, Darshan now coming up from the flank and they're not really able to move forward. There's a okay. cosmic binding and that's going to force the ult out of Che. And Che caught, forced to use that ultimate. See, Tempered Fate alive. here. Man. He could. I think they're just going to turn for that dragon. That's exactly what they're doing. Magical Journey brings Xmithi and Huhi along for the ride. Stixay there as well. And they have total vision of this going down right now. They've used the hawk shot. Uh, Darshan on the flank. Uh oh. They're going to try and stop him. Darshan going to be coming in from behind, but Jin Air sticking together. Temper Fate going to catch So on. Darshan yeah. failed his jump. He failed his jump, so he's kind of stuck on the other side there. It's a 4v5 for the moment. So on could turn around with this. Xmithy very, very low. Stixay taken down to kill for Kuzan. Xmithy has to flee, but there's the all from Viz. Finally finds Ash, and that will be another win for C. CLG in the team fight. So on turns around. They found who he. Whoa, never mind. Now it's two for three. Jin Air coming out a little bit ahead. I feel like this one's not over yet. It's hunting time for Rise. Uh, yeah, you, I Rise don't know if they're going to be able to actually chase down So on here. But actually, it was CLG coming out ahead. That might they, they get the dragon. Here's the TP coming through. Darshan wants to kill on So on. He's going to find it too. Another kill for CLG. End up three for three in that fight overall. Or two for four, I'm sorry, in that fight overall. CLG, way ahead. Well, then CLG keeping their cool. That fight started off with Darshan face planting into the <laughs> wall while CLG, all these members expected him to be there, including Darshan himself. So luckily for them, they did have a lead and they just had a fantastic open here. Check it out. It's almost. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's such a heartbreaker, too, because this could have been a game winning team fight for CLG. Yeah, maybe played that so well. Triple cast and body slam for Peel. Sticks and catting on the side, but. Yeah, kind of overcommits a bit. CLG could have disengaged, but I, nobody really noticed uh, Darshan failing his jump there. We noticed. Yeah, and honestly, right now, they have to deal with this Fizz. This is now a nine-kill Fizz in this game. He has nine of CLG's 15 kills. He has an immense amount of gold right now. He's about 5,000 gold up currently on so on, both the farm and the kills. So they've wow. got to take care of him quickly. And I think may be able to clean up the rest of CLG, but this kind of snowballing, and now he gets a Void Staff just outright on top of everything else. He doesn't believe in components. He only buys like full items. Well, I mean, he just got a triple kill, so. He can do that. <laughs> Coming now, in. Soan did finish his uh, QSS. So he's got a little bit more survivability. QSS done for pilot as well. So Jin Air slowly building into the team that can deal with the Temper of Faith, that can deal with the Cosmic Binding as well. 
but I don't know if Kuzan can actually deal enough damage so far into these fights. And he just hasn't, while he's made some good solo plays, his team fighting really hasn't been on point, and he has been, had a nasty habit of getting poked out before he can actually contribute. And there's, there's two factors to that. One is the vision control from CLG here. We'll get back to that later as we see a Baron being attempted. Yeah, they're going for it. Hawk shot used. Half health. Jinair knows what's up. Are they going to go in and try to fight this? Baron very low. CLG takes it. Shea comes in. A little bit low. Pops that ult immediately. Wing trying to force Darshan on the fight while the rest of Jinair engages CLG. But there's a kill already for Stixay. Shea's ultimate is gone. Pilot cleanses and runs away. Darshan oh. all over him. And Kuzan on his own can't do a lot. There's another kill for Fizz. That's 10 so far in this game. And CLG just going to turn their attention right to the mid lane with that Baron buff. Yeah, absolutely fantastic call there from CLG because there's nothing that can backfire on that plan. You have Kindred who does Baron incredibly quickly. If you do get engaged on, you can put the ulti in the entire pit and you're, that's your failsafe. In terms of Smite versus Smite, you have Kalista who can rend execute the Baron. So fantastic call by CLG and they may well take the game. I think they're going for it. They may be going for the win right here and a win would send them to the finals. Darshan pushing by himself in the top lane. I know that's not something we've seen a lot today, but that's just what Darshan does sometimes, guys. Darshan's really had a hell of a tournament so he far. He's been so impressive in the way that he pushes these lanes by himself. Very calculated. Again, just not really getting caught out and consistently taking objectives. CLG, CLG's vision control overall, as we watch that again here, sticks immediately cleansing out. Uh, or with the QSS so he can rend execute the Baron. Good zoning here, ultimate. So on has no business walking forward because this sets up for a beautiful cosmic banning. Double stun here. And once the Rise is dead, the fight's already over. Yeah, nobody was even there for Jyn'Air. They sort of filed in one by one. And all of their important abilities were down by the time the fight started. Alistair combo had already been blown uh, by Che going into the pit. Pilot had already used that uh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow and it had been cleansed off. So they really couldn't continue that fight. It would have been much better for them just to back off and try and defend. Now Jyn'Air trying to position themselves to maybe, maybe take this dragon. At least keep that fifth one away from CLG. If CLG gets that fifth dragon, it is over, over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it probably already is over, over. It should be eventually, <laughs> but it'd be over, over, over if they get the fifth dragon on top of everything. Yeah, CLG did such good work with that Baron buff too, and uh, they've shown just a lot of different styles of compositions, a lot of different styles of play. Uh, again, they're playing around Darshan's strength on that split push, So, but he's shown now, many different champions that he can be successful with in this tournament. Riven, Fizz, Jax. He's been able to do the damage and play the way he wants to in every single game. Yeah, we can see that even though CLG replaced two members, they still have that, that framework there, especially the synergy between Aphromu and Xmiffy in terms of vision. Very often, the reason Kuzan has been poked out and caught off so much when he engages is because he's not flanking and he can't flank because he's constantly in vision. CLG always has knowledge where he's coming from, and then it's incredibly easy to punish a LeBlanc. So, CLG very wary of their surroundings overall. Yeah, bringing those Baron minions, it's a huge wave coming into the base of the Jyn Air Green Wings. It's kind of the last stand, dragging up in 20 seconds. CLG not too concerned with that. If they can just push ahead here, even if they have to fall back, they can just fall right back to that dragon. And looks like that's what they're going to do for now, taking the magical journey. And how fast can they kill this dragon? Three inims down. They can just wait. They don't even have to start it. Yeah, they should just really wait for it right here. I mean, they have the Callista, so it's pretty easy secure. There's not really a chance here. But, I mean, they can also it's take just, absolutely zero chances. I mean, no inhibs, right? Yep. So they're just going to take the dragon. Fifth dragon stack for CLG, and they are poised to 2-0 the Jyn'Air Green Wings. They move on to the finals. What a way! What a way to go out of the tournament. You know, <laughs> against five dragons, zero inips, slow, pain, like painful <laughs> death. You know, it's not like oh, we lost a FIFA. No, no. I'm gonna watch you suffer. It's gonna be a nice sat plane. CLG is thinking right now. Well, NA taking their first best of against a Korean team ever. They want to savor this victory. Well, this Make is it as complete as it can be. I mean, this is such a story for CLG, too. After everything that happened in the offseason, all the criticism they received, and yeah. now they're coming in, and they're looking like they're going to be moving on to the finals. They went to Korea twice, couldn't do it. They may do it today. <laughs> they needed Korea to come to them. That's really what, what they needed. 
One Nexus turret down, they're gonna dive in there. Whoa, two members of Gene are very low health already. CLG wants to win this final fight in his chaos. Ash Arrow comes in, doesn't do much at all. And Darshan doing so much damage on that Fizz. And this is it, there goes the Nexus. CLG will 2-0 the Gene Air Green Wings and move on to the finals. What great patient play we saw out of CLG in that game. They, can, they knew their win conditions, they played it out very well. And Darshan, Zion Spartan just had Having a wonderful tournament so far. And the same can be said about So as their opponent in the finals. I am really excited to see these two guys go head to head. Well, this roster, this CLG roster, is looking like an extremely strong force to be reckoned with looking ahead to next season here in North America. And they're certainly looking like a force to be reckoned with against Origin in the finals, too. Showing a lot of different stuff, a lot of different champions, a lot of different strategies. And with as good as Origin looked in their semifinal match, and as good as Origin looked in Worlds, I think we're in for a very close finals. And it's a nice redemption for CLG, too, after getting knocked out in the group stage of the World Championship. Now they're on the final stage here, and they have a chance to prove that they, they can compete with teams as good as Origin. It's going to be a tough task, though, because the one thing that generally sets 